So who here remembers show and tell? Yeah, I know, it's like TED Talks for toddlers, but in all seriousness for me, these past few years, show and tell has been more than just a job description, but a business model. I run Ogception, a tech education marketing company right here in Memphis. And as a tech education marketer, I act as a liaison between businesses and nonprofits, research institutions, and our traditional K-12 education system with a focus on Crosstown High meaning that my office is right that way. So, my main job is to help people see a more whole picture with STEM education. That's convenient because in Greek, the term hologram also means whole picture. That's also where we get words like holistic. So let's talk about something that's just not as holistic as we want it to be. The STEM education system in the United States has several major problems. Worst of all is its results. Next year, there's gonna be about one million more computer science jobs than computer science students which will amount to around a $500 billion deficit to the economy. So what are some skills that, that we're currently learning to help make this place a better tech world? We like to focus on X-reality, which is a combination of augmented, mixed, and virtual reality. Reality capture, which is taking objects from the real world and rendering them volumetrically in a virtual one. Using artificial intelligence to make these and other jobs easier. And finally, an, an investment in the future with quantum computing. At Oxception, we have a few goals for making an introduction to some of these esoteric topics. We like to start off with demystification, which is the, which is the process of making, a, making an esoteric topic more approachable and building confidence in the student, which is followed by empowerment, which is the day-to-day -day grind of project-based learning, which leads to integration, being able to use these topics not only in other classwork, but in the community at large before the students even have a college degree. So here's an example. Right behind me, you see 10 of the 44 phonemes in the English language. Phonemes are basically building blocks for any language. So in order to create a voice facsimile like Siri, Cortana, or Alexa, you not only need a powerful AI, but a lot of different phonemes to make it work. So as part of a science project, my students created their own voice facsimile deep fakes of themselves using a Lyrebird AI. And here are some of the results. Here's one of my students, Kelvin, with some of the results. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. Something inspires the only cow of late to make no more of a wall than open gate. Quotidianum da nobus holy, it demit nobus to be the nostris. So I already touched upon virtual reality for a moment, but what I would really like to focus on right now is virtual reality for empathy. So this is a picture of one of my virtual reality cinematography courses. So this is artificial intelligence. We make uh, lots of advertisements with these. So we use these 360 cameras. So what's special, about art what's special about 360 cameras is that it basically allows you to look out the eyes of another human being and walk in their shoes, which is an important part of empathy. So in response to this, one of my students, Kristen, created her own virtual reality experience to help students empathize with recent refugees and immigrants. We're going to show, we're going to show language barriers through AR, VR. So with Google Slides, we made the slides, two screenshots of them, prop those, and then put those into here. And so... Oh my gosh. It's like it's right there. Yes, Quincy. You can see it, Quincy. Ooh. And so we have two different things to show what it is and what our product was about. And then we have... Every platform has its own slide about something that the refugees and immigrants and their hardships yeah, what they go through. Play area. And so we have education, we have everyday life. It's pretty cool. She's only in ninth grade and she's doing such important work. So, what I'm holding right now is something called a photogram. Yes, you heard me correctly, a photogram. A photogram is a 3D model created with an artificial intelligence and traditional photography techniques. What makes photogrammetry special 
is that it's so approachable. It only requires a camera and an internet connection. So that means you can really scale this to as small as, let's say, my face with selfies, or as large as the entire city of Memphis with satellite imagery. So as part of an engineering project, my students created their own photograms of some of the items in the lobby of this very building. So you can see right now, my students are getting into teams, and they're taking pictures of this sewing machine, and they're going around it to make sure they get a whole picture. And when they were done, they printed out this monstrosity. It's almost as if they have a shrink ray. You can kind of see right here a little sewing machine on the sewing machine. So, moving on to everyone's favorite subject, math. So a few months ago, I was giving, <laughs> I know. So a few months ago, <laughs> I, was giving, um, I was giving a lecture on quantum computers, RSA encryption, and prime numbers. Insert FedEx engineer Jonathan Pace. Last year, Jonathan Pace discovered the world's largest prime number right here in Memphis. A record he held for about, up until around six weeks ago, by the way. But at the time, <laughs> but at the time, I had him over to discuss with my students how large prime numbers are discovered through computation and how quantum computers stand to change all of that. And in true exception style, after his talk, I led my students in using this quantum computer in the Canary Islands. What makes quantum computers special is two things, quantum superposition and quantum entanglement. For our purposes, quantum entanglement is the faster than light teleportation of particles and information in a quantum computer. These are ninth graders, by the way. And um, what you can see right here is that this particular model has five qubits. So it kind of looks like a musical score, since every good boy deserves quantum mechanics, for those music people out there. <laughs> <laughs> my, my students really took to this quantum algorithm process for our musical history, of course. So it's safe to say that our exception is a quantum leap in STEM education. So on to holograms, what you guys paid for. What we have right here is a hologram of some of the local Memphis nonprofits using augmented reality. That's a little bit more new agey. I'd like to focus more on the traditional hologram. And yes, there is a tradition about as old as candles and glass. It's called the Pepper's Ghost Hologram. In its current incarnation, you can see right here, it's just plastic and tape. So what you can do with that is you can reasonably project all kinds of holograms with just your phone. And this activity is fun to do for people as young as my Whitehaven STEM students up here and my Crosstown High students over here. It means it's versatile. However, this particular model has a tiny problem in that it's tiny. You can only project a hologram of X height, and that's like, ugh, you know? <laughs> what, did you, what did you want to do? So I had a student whose name's Terrell, and he created a larger version of this. Now for the engineers in the crowd, creating a larger version of anything sometimes requires different math. So he learned all the necessary math, and he entered his calculations into this laser cutter we have right here on our campus, and we used it to cut micron accurate lens fittings for the holographic projector. And when he was done, he recorded a very special message I want you all to hear. My name is Terrell Embry, and I hope you like this project. My goal is for you not to make stereotypes against the person before you get to know them. And remember, view someone the way you would like well, to. Well, look at the hologram. Can I get a round of applause for my Crosstown High students? So this is really recent. But yesterday, I met with Lorene Powell Jobs, the widow of the late Steve Jobs. And she's also our benefactor, too. So basically, she said to me personally that she wishes she went to high school here. <laughs> so that's just a really quick tidbit of knowledge. But before I leave you, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. <laughs> one final thought. So. This might not be entirely accurate, but the next four popes, the next 10 presidents, anyone who's going to serve on Congress or be a neurosurgeon in the next 75 years is alive right now. And many of them, they're going through an education system. So when you get home tonight and you're thinking about the little neurosurgeon in your life, I want you to consider the work of Crosstown High students and how Ogception is showing and telling the whole picture. Thank you. <laughs>